uh, I can provide my desired state in a, in a YAML file in case of Kubernetes. And then we can collaborate together uh, and store those files in Git and um, somehow provide this, uh, this desired state of my infrastructure to Kubernetes. The thing is, Kubernetes does not provide uh, out of a box a way for extracting this, uh, this last state from Git. And that's exactly where Argo CD uh, comes into place, right? Argo CD is, has exactly this responsibility to, to get the, the it to interface with, with your Git provider and it will, provide, it will uh, present this, uh, this latest state of your infrastructure to Kubernetes. And Kubernetes will kick off the, the, the reconciliation loop to, 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 to bring up your desired state into the live state. Okay, and let's say I convinced you to go with Argo CD, and what is the first decision you have to make? Uh, which Git repo to use, right? Uh, this is the first question you have to answer. And we basically understand that are, there are two, two different approaches you can take here. One is uh, dumping everything in one single repo, meaning you're gonna be using the same repo where you have all your source code to, to, um, to store your, your manifest files, your, your infrastructure uh, configurations. Or you can use an independent repo, which is totally disconnected from your source code and uh, to, to, to store this, uh, this configuration files, right? Maybe intuitively you might go with the first option. This is what I did when I first installed Argo CD uh, myself. And let me show you what are the, the pros and cons of this approach. Um, so basically with, with a centralized repo, one of, the, one, of the, one of the pros, right, is that things are uh, placed in the same repo, obviously, right? You can just open a folder and uh, see what is the current configuration of your production environment. It's really it's in the same repo where you have all your source code, which is great. Uh, but what are the dis disadvantages with this approach? Uh, so the, uh, we understand that the authorization model might be uh, harder to, 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 to define. Basically because most of the times, uh, the role of the, 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 the member of your team who has, ask, who has access to, to commit and merge uh, code in, in, in your master branch or in your main branch is not the same, is the same role of the person who has uh, the, the, the permission to deploy and change things in production, right? So this, is, this is something uh, that is usually uh, a requirement. And if you have everything in one single repo, it's gonna be harder for you to come up with some uh, configuration authorizing just specific type of users to change your uh, production environment. Another uh, disadvantage is that this is going to provide you some more uh, complex CI environment. Um, so if you're if you're opting to to get to, to get installed something like Argo CD, it's probably because you want to have uh, continuous deployment. And by that, it means every merge to the main branch will trigger a job that will uh, build your application and uh, create a new version. But then you have to update the configuration uh, files again, and which will trigger the job. So it's a kind of a chicken and egg problem. And uh, it's not impossible to, 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 to address, but if it can be avoided, uh, the better it is, uh, in our opinion. Um, and the last one is uh, sometimes a requirement in companies to, 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 to have um, history of every, everything that gets changed in production. So if you, if you just dump the files in the same repo as you have your source code, it, it is going to, what is going to happen is that commits is going to be mixed with uh, you know, production configuration uh, uh, together with, uh, with your source code. So if you want to extract a report to who changed which, uh, which resource in, in production and when, it's gonna be uh, a little bit harder for, for extract that if you have a, a mixed uh, mix repo, right? Uh, a centralized repo. Okay, moving forward. What, let's see how it looks like if we go with an independent repo, right? So what are the, what are the advantages? Um, in this case, it's, uh, it's a simpler P CI or no CI at all. You, we understand that you don't necessarily need a CI, so you can, if you, if you have a totally independent repo, like uh, your application underscore deployment, and you dump your manifest in there, uh, you can just configure Argo CD 
to watch this this ripple, like the main branch, every every single commit that it get that gets uh, pushed to the, to the to the main branch, will trigger Argo CD sync process, which will uh, update your cluster. So you don't necessarily need uh, a CI in this case, uh, in simple cases, right? Um, so this is also going to be provide you a much easier authorization model capabilities because now you're not tied to the same repo where you have your source code. Now you have the entire repository so you can leverage, uh, let's say you use GitHub, you can leverage already available GitHub uh, uh, features to, to decide who can do what, uh, who can merge what, branch protection. Uh, yeah, there are many features to, to help you with that. And it will provide you a cleaner history. One uh, disadvantage is that in this case, uh, yeah, you're gonna have to deal with the two different uh, repositories. It's not, it's not gonna be centralized. If that's an issue, uh, we don't, we don't think it, it justifies uh, all the advantages we have. Cool. Let's say I convinced you to go with an independent repo. What is the next problem, right? You might run through. You need to decide what is the layout. What are the files that you're gonna be dumping in this uh, deployment repo looking like? Right? And one thing that we've been using for quite some time is uh, Customize. Um, so Customize provides you <coughs> the ability to, to define this. Uh, this is a, the, 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 the layout suggested by Customize, which allows you to provide uh, the basic uh, configuration for your infrastructure in this uh, folder called Base. And then it provides this uh, overlay concept that uh, allows you to leverage this concept to implement things like uh, per development, per environment uh, specific setups. And uh, we use like uh, uh, this, this overlay concept to, to define different environments, right? So things, uh, configurations in development environment that are going to be different from production and stage environment. So this is something that you can easy, easily get uh, from Customize. And then it's very, very easy to just configure Argo CD to watch those specific folders or maybe you have that in specific namespaces and deploy in uh, uh, sorry, uh, specific branches. And then you can configure Argo CD to deploy in specific namespace and specific clusters, right? Okay, let's say you're good with this, but now you want to protect your application, your team to, uh, uh, to interfere with other teams, right? You want to provide some sort of a multi-tenancy. Uh, how can Argo CD help you with that? So Argo CD provides this, this uh, it's a different CRD in Argo CD project called Project, uh, where you can define things like who, who uh, is allowed to, to, to use this project, who, <coughs> which uh, Git repos are allowed to be, uh, uh, to be read from this project, define our backs, define what are the target clusters that can be uh, uh, configured to deploy applications assigned to this project. And then you can have your existing application and assign to those projects to kind of protect your environment uh, in, in a good way, right? So there's one, there's still one missing piece here. I mentioned uh, about our back, I mentioned about users having permission. Uh, but for that to be possible, I need to somehow have some uh, authentication in place. I need I need to um, as, uh, uh, I need to have users uh, assigned to roles, so I can properly configure this RPAC. And this is exactly how uh, Alex is going to join this converse, this uh, presentation, uh, providing this hands-on uh, section with you, Alex. Cool. Thank you. Thanks a lot for providing this great overview of how Argo can help. And now I want to talk about how can you get yourself an Argo CD that actually can make it possible? And before I you know, go deeper into details, I want to describe my requirements for that Argo CD. And uh, as Leo said, uh, if we want to uh, provide it for the whole organization, it has to be multi-tenant. And what that means is uh, Argo CD has to be able to serve lots of teams and teams has to be protected from each other. Basically, I don't want anyone accidentally deleting someone else's production and things like that. And next, I want to provide a good experience to the teams. It's usually security is never convenient, and, but I do want to have very seamless onboarding process. So every team can you know, just onboard themselves to uh, Argo CD. Plus, <coughs> I want to take care of uh, a platform team. I don't want them to 
work too hard to do it, and that's why I want to have this process uh, as self-service as possible. Thank you. And is that, let's talk about things that we will have to manage, and then later on we can talk about how we're going to manage uh, those things. So uh, the very first thing that we would have to configure is uh, authentication. And uh, if you ever uh, installed Argo CD in your Minikube cluster, you already know that it has a system accounts feature. By default, every Argo CD has an admin account that has God level privileges and it can manage anything. And I just want to stop you from using this feature. So there is a reason why it's not called users. The system is called uh, system accounts because it's meant for API integrations. And usually organizations use it to automate Argo CD settings management. And we really do not want to you to use uh, accounts uh, to provide multi-tenancy in production. So, uh, and there are a ton of reasons to use uh, SSO and identity provider. If you are a member of a platform team, you're going to be really glad you made the decision to use uh, identity provider. The main reason is uh, you just push, you, you save yourself, yourself a ton of time by, not, by pushing away this work of managing, you know, uh, of user management. Basically, you will not be responsible for storing users. You will not have to resolve tickets to add one member from, you know, move member from one group to another group. And uh, basically, that's why Argo CD takes a single sign-on so seriously. And few words about how to configure it. So the main integration point for Argo CD with any identity provider is uh, OIDC protocol. And uh, basically, you have a ton of choices uh, if uh, already with just OIDC. There are providers like uh, of 0 Okta, Azure, IDP, and many more. So OIDC is very popular. And uh, this little YAML snippet is to just to convince you that it's not so difficult to configure. You pretty much just need to provide uh, a URL and a couple secrets. And that's it. Argo CD will be connected with your SSO provider. And even if you do not have OIDC, you still can connect Argo CD to your provider through an awesome project called DEX, which is bundled into Argo CD. And I'm going to actually use DEX in the demo part. So we will see how easy it is to configure single sign-on with provider like GitHub. Uh, so once we're done with authentication, uh, the next question is how do we authorize uh, our users? How do we link the OIDC group that SSO provides to the user once login is complete? How do we map, map it to um, some uh, RBAC configuration? And here uh, Argo CD again decided not to reinvent the wheel. So we are not building uh, any custom RBAC uh, solution. Instead, Argo CD leverages an awesome project called Casbin, which is an engine that lets you manage your kind of access control uh, configuration. So Casbin allows to configure a bunch of uh, access models, such as ABAC, RBAC, ACL. And so at Argo CD, we made a decision to use RBAC. This cannot be changed. However, you can use um, has been configuration language to define our back rules. And uh, this snippet here has the, serves the same purpose. Uh, it's really easy to use Casbin and easy use to configure Casbin. It's, it's not YAML this time. It's just a little um, a CSS like uh, a file that lets you define groups and uh, policies, assign policies to groups. And my point here is that it's super flexible. Basically, you can assume that you will be able to achieve very complex use cases uh, related to our bug using Casbin. And if you understand that, that uh, project, you might leverage that knowledge in some other systems because it's used pretty uh, widely in some other systems. And uh, so now we have authentication and authorization. We get to make them work together and this is maybe the last important concept that we have to learn before we jump into the demo. Uh, that concept, concept is called Argo CD project. And uh, it's pretty much the core of Argo CD multi-tenancy functionality. It lets you take your configured SSO and your bug settings and kind of link them together, make them work together. And what you can do using project is you can group a bunch of applications. And what that means is every application belongs to one and only one project. 
next you can define boundaries on that project and those boundaries will be enforced on every application that belongs to a project and you can limit which source repositories can be used as a source of manifest for every application you can decide which namespaces those manifests can be deployed to and in most in in many cases and we suggest to, to use this approach uh, users use project to represent a team basically you can create a project per team define the set of uh, infrastructure that team manages and let them use the source repository that they uh, use to manage the uh, kubernetes configuration and so once you have this boundary set up all you have to do is you just need to tell to the project which oidc group manages the project and i hope you can see it it's the last line of this yaml file so in this case i'm i'm, I'm have imaginary my work my team oidc group that probably represents one team and uh, that team has access to a project and you can use Casbin to provide fine-grained access uh, to the users of the team within a project and so having those three things we pretty much can solve uh, the requirements that we described before we can get the multi-tenant Argo CD instance the question is how are we going to manage it and I think this is the whole like, purpose of that uh, presentation we, it took us some time to get here but um, so my point is to convin convince you that you do not want to use uh, tickets to um, to manage all of that like to manage uh, our back SSO and, and projects and some other things that as you will see in the future in shortly so um, to kind of give a little bit more color to the problem so of course you, you can you can set up a Jira project you can t tell to your you know your users that every time they need to get access to Argo CD they're supposed to create a ticket uh, and then someone from the platform team will respond to the ticket and make changes but in real life maybe maybe like six months later you will realize that Argo CD is a critical uh, piece of infrastructure that touches very sensitive uh, uh, manages sensitive configurations so that's why each and every change in Argo CD must be stored in some audit system you want to have some approval process you want to uh, you want to take care of the settings that you as a platform team uh, apply to Argo CD and those changes also has to be stored in uh, in some form of auditing system and if you take into account those requirements then it's it's kind of too it's already frustrating enough to try to do better and luckily for us uh, there is a better process that we call GitOps and so the biggest question is can we use GitOps to manage Argo CD configuration and answer is we definitely can and the reason is Argo CD has no database behind it it persists everything in a Kubernetes cluster and that's why all you have to do you just need to manage Kubernetes is, uh, manifests that represent projects uh, config maps secrets hopefully no secrets uh, just config maps and, and projects and that's why we do we can use uh, GitOps to to do so. And uh, with GitOps, developers are going to use tools that they already know, such as GitHub, for example. They're going to be familiar with pull requests concept, and administrators of a platform team are developers as well, engineers. So they would like this approach as well, and that makes everyone happy. So now it's time to see it in action. Finally, uh, this. Uh, barcode is uh, for you if you want to do the demo after the talk if you want to play with it just uh, take a screenshot maybe and it will lead you to this URL that I'm going to open right now and the URL is a git uh, repository uh, the name of this repo is control plane and let me describe like why I chose this name so the reason is this repository is going to have uh, a bunch of Kubernetes manifests that describe everything that platform team manages so if you look at the content of it you will see uh, folders like Argo CD and by the name you can guess it's going to manage Argo CD configuration and uh, next uh, it has clusters and so it will the clusters folder is going to have everything that platform team manages for end users in the target managed clusters 
and I will describe shortly why it is important. So uh, next we can switch to the readme file and readme is pretty much step-by-step uh, -step instructions of, of it, it's a script of the demo. I already finished the preparation part. I installed a Kubernetes, I just used K3S cluster, I installed Argo CD into that cluster, and then I configured Argo CD to manage itself by running this kubectl apply command that simply in, inserted this YAML file. It applied this YAML file into the Argo CD namespace. And so let's take a look at this file. Let's see what it has. So and here it's the just Argo CD application that tell, tells Argo CD to watch this same repository, look into the Argo CD folder, and push everything from that folder into the Argo CD namespace. And that's pretty much everything we need to get this self-managed setup. So now Argo CD is configured to manage itself. And from the beginning, I kind of took advantage of it. And I created a couple more YAML files here. One is uh, Argo CD CM, which is Argo CD config map. And I did configure uh, SSO uh, using DEX, and I connected it to GitHub. And so it really, it's so easy. So there is nothing to learn about it. You need to create a GitHub of zero uh, application, uh, uh, of two application. and uh, configure a couple of secrets here, and that's it. Argo CD is going to know how to talk to GitHub, uh, and Dex is already bundled in Argo CD, so you don't even have to configure Dex itself. Uh, next, I needed to create myself SSO-powered administrator, and I, to do so, I created another uh, uh, config map that defines RBAC rules, and here I gave uh, admin permissions to Argo itself because I have access to that account, I can't use it for, for demos. <laughs> uh, all right, sorry about that. Now it's time to see it in action. So this is Argo, uh, Argo account. And I want to go ahead and prove you that it, the SSO works. So if I click uh, login, yeah, SSO worked. So we were able to log in. Um, and because this user is admin, it can see everything. So in case you don't know, this is how Argo CD user interface looks like. It is showing me an application that ma manages Argo CD itself. If I click on it, you can see that it does manage few resources. It manages config map, it manages Argo, uh, Arbac config map, as well as the application resource itself. And here we get this infinite loop, like when Argo CD manages itself. And uh, next, let's log in as a user. As a user who has no permissions yet. So if I do the login here uh, as a user, as using my personal account, I won't see any application, which is good. It's expected because I'm definitely, as a user, not supposed to see applications of a platform team. And uh, next, let's go ahead and try to create an application. And if I do so, the first thing that I have to provide is I need to choose which project my application is going to belong to and there are no projects available for me. And so now I want to onboard my team, which consists of just me, and I want to, instead of creating a ticket, I want to use GitOps, and I'm just going to do it right now. So um, I'm going to make a change in that Git repository, and here I'm kind of providing you a convention that work for even a big company. So you can just have a projects folder in your, under your Argo CD directory, and you can have a convention to have a project per team. And so the onboarding process is to just the copy, you know, copy like a sample file and provide team specific configurations. I already created that file in the repo. It's not there in the system yet because everything here is commented out. So I'm just going to uncomment it and create a pull request. Let's see, I don't want to make a mistake. So the I uncommented it, created PR. I will show you the content of this file shortly. When I switch back to my admin shoes and I'm trying to uh, review this pull request. And so now I'm acting as a Argo CD administrator. And instead of uh, reading the description in the ticket and trying to understand what the user wants, I kind of, I have already a work done for me. I just need to validate that it, it's meaningful and, and maybe make sure that the, 
person who created it follows the convention. And so here I have a project which name matches to the team name. It allows this team to manage whatever repo they want, uh, use whatever repo they want to manage the manifests. And uh, it allows the team to deploy applications from that repo into any namespace that starts with uh, a prefix that matches to a team name, which is another powerful convention that might be useful for you. This way you don't have to you know, manage each and every change. You kind of give a little bit of flexibility here and it still let you separate teams from each other. So let's say I like this pull request. Oh, and by the way, here I'm also, I'm explaining to admin that, hey, the members of the team are going to be part of this group and for the sake of demo, I just choose email to be a group. So it will only whitelist me. All right, so if I like everything here, all I need to do, I just need to merge this pull request and approve and merge it. So now we have audit of this change. Next, if I switch to Argo CD, I have to click this refresh button just to save us uh, like three minutes of time uh, because Argo CD check Git every three minutes. And so if I switch back to uh, Argo CD as a user, you can see now that I have a project available for me. For pretty much our board onboarding is done. Now I am as a developer, uh, ready to use Argo CD. I can create application. So I can have, have this pre-filled pre uh, to save time, but I do want to show you that I'm using the right repository and I, I'm going to deploy into namespace that starts with my team name and let's pretend it's my dev environment. So I'm going to give it you know, a suffix called dev. So I, because Arbuck is working, I can create this application and let's go ahead and deploy it. And that's intentional. It's not the demo fail. It's failed because we still have a lot of other things to do. Like it's not enough to just configure uh, our bug. We also need to get some cluster level resources like namespace, for example. So I chose this namespace team a dev, but no one created it for me. And you might uh, also, you, you might, uh, we short on time, we have five minutes left. Okay, uh, you might use tickets to create namespaces but it's going to be the same pain as, as a project. Plus this problem is like extremely, it's very similar to the problem of managing our bug. So I want to convince you to use GitOps to manage cluster level resources as well. And the reason is Argo has a great support for it, for that use case. The only problem, uh, the only difference of managing cluster level resources is that those resources are not part of Argo CD namespace. So you would have to create a separate set of applications for each and every cluster. And that's a lot of I mean, manual work for administrators. And Argo CD has an answer uh, that solve a little bit, reduce this pain. Uh, answer is called application set. So application set is an admin tool that helps you to automate application creation. And this is the application set that I already kind of had in, in this repository. I just need to push it and comment it and push. And application set is configured to watch um, clusters folder in my repository and create an application for every subfolder, assuming that subfolder is the name of a cluster registered in Argo CD. And so what it will do for us, it will automate uh, propagation of every manifest in the cluster subfolder into appropriate cluster. And I can let my users, uh, end users, make changes in that folder. So this way, administrators kind of still, all they have to do is to just review PRs and don't do much of manual work. So since I'm admin, I'm just going to push it into the dev branch, uh, into main branch. I don't have to create PRs. Let's refresh application again. So uh, Argo CD detected the application set. Application set created its application that manages a cluster and you know manage resources in the cluster. Now, if I switch back to my uh, admin uh, uh, end user account, I can make a change and finish the onboarding. I'm currently in uh, the cluster folder that represents cluster where Argo CD is running, which I'm using for demo. And I have a snippet of like namespaces uh, for, for my team. So here I'm introducing three namespaces, dev, stage, and prod environments. Uh, let's go ahead and because we're short on time and I can Let's not, let's not do a pull request, let's just merge it to a main branch. Uh, but it's a bad idea to do it in production. 
Now, if we refresh this application, we can see that Argo CD detected that three namespaces should be created, jumping back to the user uh, UI, and we can finally synchronize and deploy our application. And that's pretty much, this is the real life workflow that you can use to run the whole organization. So it can, it scales really well. You don't have to manage a giant file and resolve merge conflicts. And uh, this is the link for you to tell us what you think about this approach. So provide us um, uh, any feedback. And we have like one minute left for questions. Thank you, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> There. Uh, thank you for the demo and I really like the application set feature uh, but my um, logical question is is there plans for project sets like something that would be generating projects uh, based on the directories yeah uh, I think I, I know that right now there is nothing like that for projects I know at least one company that uses API to generate the projects I guess that's the, the best answer we have right now. So the company has another source of true for projects, and there is literally a, a Jenkins pipeline that, every, so not Jenkins pipeline, there is a kind of controller that creates, uh, watches the database and creates, creates an Argo CD project in, for every database entry. Yeah. Hi, I'm Junaid. Um, uh, I'm working at a company called Titan HQ. Just wanted to ask, uh, can we do resource ordering uh, for deployment? Yes. Via Argo City? Yeah, there are two features. Uh, one is called Sync Waves. Have you heard about Sync Waves? Uh, I haven't. No, okay. I, then I just I started think, looking at Argo uh, City, so I'm not I, I guess that's the right answer. So, okay. Sync Waves is a simple way to kind of orchestrate deployment process a little bit. Mm -hmm. is, is if you apply a certain annotation on your resource, uh, which is something like argoproj.io slash syncwave, and the value of this annotation is a number. And so by default, Argo CD assumes that all resources are assigned to wave zero, so it synchronizes everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. If you want to sync something before okay. everything else, you can apply that annotation and put minus one as a value, and Argo CD will make sure to sync those things first. Okay. If, let's say, you're deploying, if you're syncing a deployment, it will also make sure it's healthy. And then it proceeds to next wave, and, okay. and this way you can typical use cases like yes. I don't know. You want to for the namespace thing, we can do sync. Uh, sync yes, bits. yeah, uh, okay. namespaces. Yeah, work so like first this. the namespace is created, and then the other. Mm -hmm. bits. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Let's let's. Okay, we have time for one more question. Uh, hi, my name is San. Uh, so, uh, as a maintainer, do you, do you think like maintaining? Um, I go CD, I go workflows, I go events um, in a team. Do, do, we, do we need a separate team to maintain the entire I go setup? I, or do, would you recommend to have like X team set up the, their own uh, I go? I, I can share, I guess, my experience. I think it really depends on how many engineers you need to support. So in our case, we had a lot of engineers, so we had to have a dedicated team to manage I go CD. Uh, and I think it really depend on use cases. It's just we learn it from like experience. Uh, mm -hmm. Workflow users usually do, you know, they need to solve completely different set of problems. Usually it's like ML data processing. And that's why that's for, for that reason, mostly what happened with us is we had a separate team managing workflows and separate separate team managing CD. So I guess, yeah, if you, if you have a lot of developers, then there is enough work to do on Argo CD side. And if you most likely going to solve different use cases, so you will need two different teams with different skill sets to manage. Okay. I see. Thank you.